I'd like to end this module by sharing a very personal story with you. And the reason I want to share this story with you is that it's a great example of a lot of the concepts and terms that we've been talking about recently. Things like the empirical rule, or percentiles, uh, z-scores, outliers, and you'll see that a lot of it blends together. And at the same time, this is a great example speaking to the power of statistics. Okay, so here's some background. In 2019, my wife and I had a baby girl named Eliza, and she was born with some congenital heart defects. And thankfully, doctors were able to identify these heart defects in utero so that they were able to put a plan in place, and then they corrected them. They corrected her heart with surgery soon after she was born. And Eliza's doing really well today. Now, doctors were able to identify the problem and communicate the severity of the problem to me and my wife using statistics. And I have to say that it helped a ton that both my wife and I understand statistics so that we knew that she would certainly need surgery upon birth. And so one of her surgeons drew this picture for us. And this is a picture of Eliza's heart before, uh, before the surgery. And so this right here is the right atrium, left atrium, right ventricle, left ventricle. The big artery in the middle is the pulmonary artery. And then this candy cane-like structure is the aorta. And that was the big point of concern for the doctors. So what happened was in some ultrasounds in utero, they found that Eliza's aorta was a little bit narrow compared to the rest of the population. And they were using things like the empirical rule in their calculations and z-scores in their calculations. So remember earlier in the class how we talked about how a lot of physical characteristics follow that bell curve distribution? Well, that's true with the width of newborn babies' aortas as well. And so we also talked about the empirical rule where we said things like 95% of people or 95% of data will be within two standard deviations of the mean. And so if we found somebody's z-score in a context like this, which is precisely the number of standard deviations away from the mean, we would see kind of where that fits in in terms of the empirical rule, in terms of the bell curve distribution, and just how ELISA is kind of comparing to the rest of the population. And so that's what they did. They looked at z-scores and measurements for the ascending aorta, and then the transverse aorta, and then the descending aorta. And the measurements were pretty much meaningless to us, but what was very meaningful were the z-scores that they shared. So the z-score for Eliza's ascending aorta was negative 0.81. So in a bell curve distribution of the widths of ascending aortas in newborn babies, she was 0.81 standard deviations below the mean. And so that's not that far below the mean. And we even converted this to a percentile. And you'll learn how to even do that yourself later in this class. And we saw that Eliza was in the 21st percentile. So that meant that her ascending aorta was wider than 21% of the newborn baby population, yet 79% of the population had a wider aorta there than her. So that wasn't that big of a concern. But when we got to the transverse and the descending aorta, look at those z-scores. So those z-scores were really similar to each other, negative 2.81 and negative 2.89. And so those are close to negative three. So she was almost three standard deviations below the mean. Now remember, 95% of, of people are going to be within two standard deviations of the mean. And so she is clearly not in that range. And this is certainly suggesting that she is outside that range of normal width in that section of her aorta. Now, if you convert these to percentiles, which we did and which the doctors did, we saw that she was in the 0.2 percentile. 0.2. She wasn't in the second percentile. She was in the 0.2 percentile. So this allowed us to understand immediately that, yes, she absolutely needed to have her aorta in those sections corrected upon birth. And so when she was born um, at five days old, they widened her aorta and they made it actually very wide and it now looks something like this. And um, they were able to use a donor's pulmonary artery. So they took a donor's pulmonary artery, like this artery that you have right here, and used it as a patch to turn her 
new aorta into something like this. And so now if a z-score was calculated on the width of this part of her aorta or on this part of her aorta, that z-score would probably be off the charts. So she'd probably now be way on the positive side. But the reason it was widened as much as it was was because um, she's going to be growing. And as she's growing, um, this aorta needs to accommodate. Um, and so hopefully you see in this example, this speaks to the fact that data points that are more than a couple of standard deviations away from the, the mean are in many cases outliers like we see here. And so the concept of z-score um, can be very important. And in this case, it was very helpful for the doctors to identify the problem. And it was very helpful for us to understand the scope of the problem. Um, and so, so yeah, I hope that this was a, a good example for you to see some of the, the aspects of the class kind of come together or the aspects of the module come together. And um, thank you for checking it out.